this is Lee back uh, once again for another video discussion of uh, Shimmer, volume 9293, live experience from the Berwyn Eagles Club. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the matches now, and um, it, it may go uh, a little long, uh, but I'll try to be concise. You know, I don't actually remember it all in perfect clarity, but, you know, things come back to me, and I'll jump back and forth, as I often do. But uh, just going down the list, you know, I talked about the uh, dark matches, which were nothing really to write a home about, except there was one woman that looked like she was channeling kind of a Bull Nakano. Um, one thing I want to say about some of the rookie matches, there's this whole thing, I mean, they didn't talk about Sparkle, but there's this whole thing about Rise. What is Rise? Well, apparently, it's what they're calling the Developmental Territory or Wrestling School. They, they used to call it the ROH Wrestling Academy. But I don't know if the, the relationship with Ring of Honor really continues with Shimmer anymore. So it's Rise now. And they have the Phoenix of Rise Championship. They have another belt. A lot of belts on this show. Um, you have the Phoenix of Rise uh, Championship belt. The tag team belts. The regular belt. The uh, um, uh, the uh, Heart of Shimmer Championship. And then they brought in other belts from other promotions. So there's the Shine Championship, and there was TNA champion, uh, women's, you know, knockout champion, um, and some other promotions, I forget the names, it was like WSU or LSU or PWWA, I, I don't really remember, but there was at least like six or seven different belts referenced in the, the uh, show, so it was kind of confusing, but anyway, the, the smart fans, the smarks know all about that, you can tell me all about it in the comments section if you want to, if you care. Um... So it was uh, early matches, um, you know, and you had the, uh, you know, the rookies. Uh, so coming from Rise, you had the Rise champion, and I'll talk about her in a little bit. But I noticed that they were botching their moves. They were making mistakes. You know, if you watched Botchamania, which is a great channel on YouTube, um, they show, you know, that even in the, you know, um, well, in the live show, anything years, they still make mistakes. They flub their lines. You hear them talking during the match. You're not supposed to be able to hear that when they're telling each other what move they're going to do because wrestling is obviously fake. It's staged. It's whatever, scripted, um, choreographed. It's still fun. Enjoy it. I don't I don't mind admitting that. Um, you know, these mistakes happen. Uh, the wrong thing happens. They play the wrong music. The lights go out at the wrong time. Whatever. Funny things happen with fans. And, and that happens. But, you know... A good professional, you know, the show must go on. You gotta ad lib, you gotta just get through it. Um, and a lot of times, you know, someone makes a mistake in a match and it just prompts another mistake and another, and a whole, and people get all flustered and it's a disaster. And sometimes, you know, the dark side of that is sometimes injuries can happen. Because they're obviously not really trying to kill each other, they're just trying to put on a convincing, you know, entertaining fight, staged fight. Um, well, these rookies, um, I was noticing they were making mistakes, but. They were recovering from the mistakes well. And I'm not saying that just to be charitable to them. But I was I was like, they're, you know, doing what they got to do. So, like, let's say uh, a wrestler is, like, picking up another wrestler. And it looks like they're going to do a move. And they lose their grip. And they kind of, like, don't do it right. You know, there's a number of ways they can respond. They can just go, oh, try to do it again. And then they screw it up again and they try to do it again. But maybe the other person acts like, oh, I escaped from it. I reversed it. Or they just, I mean, sometimes they just stand there and they just start stomping on the person. Like, you know, they just improvise. But they would look like, I'm starting to lose my grip. I'll do a totally different move. And I mean, it's risky, but um, they made it look convincing. Like, you know, if you're watching carefully, go, they probably made a mistake there. That probably wasn't intentional. But they made it look like they were doing something else. And so they just kind of like flipped through the match. And so I thought, even though I haven't seen these people wrestle before, even though I'm not quite invested in them yet because they are rookies, they're new, um, I'm still impressed with the uh, attention to detail, their care, and their ability to kind of like recover from these mistakes. Because it's live. The show must go on. you got to do it. you got to keep going. So um, on to the matches proper. 
And I'm going to go by a list. Um, I had to look on the web, and, you know, it's always helpful uh, because these people that are tweeting out the match results, you know, right away, they do help me uh, jog my memory as I go through. So I have no shame in admitting that I'm, I'm looking off the list. And I'll tell you, and, and if there's a mistake in the list, I'll certainly correct it. Uh, this particular list, I noticed uh, people were using the TNA names for some of the wrestlers. Um, I believe that's been corrected on Wikipedia. And it's now the original. But uh, anyway, these are just the results. Obviously, spoilers. If you're concerned about spoilers, don't watch this uh, segment. But uh, I'm going to tell you the results. And I'm just going to like tell you my thoughts about the different matches. So, okay. So, we had a uh, first match for its proper match for um, July 8th. Um, volume 92, a Thunder Kitty um, fought against Charlie Evans. And this was the, um, the woman, uh, Charlie Evans. She's kind of this um, cutesy, um, you know, woman. I guess she is the, um, she looks very young. She is the um, PWWA, uh, former PWWA champion. And um, this was this related, I think, Australian promotion. But anyway, she, um, you know, she had the moment where she acted all, act all pouty. Like she was offended what the little girls were heckling her for. Um, so it's kind of funny, kind of comedic uh, heel character. Uh, Thunder Kitty, you know, she, her whole shtick is that she is the um, matronly um, 1940s, you know, woman wrestler, you know, uh, old style um and everything and that's kind of her shtick and she kind of acts kind of tomboyish and she wears like these leopard print you know outfits and she has like the hawaiian music and the flower in her hair you know it's it's a it's a it's a gimmick it's a unique gimmick and she the problem is you know people have criticized her and and i and i think it's valid criticism is her match you know she is a i mean now she is more experienced but when she started you know she's pretty green and um her matches weren't that good really she had some Real stinkers in matches. I mean, her moves are very simplistic. A lot of kind of rest holds and punches. Um, not that interesting. But, you know, what was best about her was, I think, her witty repartee, you know, with her opponent. She would criticize, you know, the uh, <laughs> saying that her opponents look like tramps or whatever and just make jokes. Um, so that was that was entertaining. And she'd uh, work with the crowd, and it was just kind of funny. And they would always, of course, tell her that she was old, even though she's obviously a very young woman. But she's portraying someone, like, from the past. Like, she's someone really from... I mean, she would be in her 80s or something, 90s, um, wrestling. Uh, you know, old style. So, Thunder Kitty. But uh, she looks like she lost a lot of weight. People were saying, oh, she was used to be so trim, and she's gained weight. She's very small, but, I mean, she... It was very, um, you know, her figure, you know, not saying that a wrestler has to look like a Barbie, a supermodel, but she looked like she had lost a lot of weight, so she must have been in some exercise program. She didn't look unhealthy. She uh, looked perfectly healthy on the outside anyway, and, uh, you know, she'd kind of grown her hair out, so she had a different look. Um, and uh, she had this match, you know, with uh, Charlie Evans, and, you know, a little bit of a comedic uh, thing. I'd say um, not bad for a Thunder Kitty match. Um, Charlie Evans, good character, um, but, you know, the match overall was just okay, you know, it wasn't anything super impressive, but, you know, usually those early matches, um, they tend to focus on comedy or looks or whatever, and they're just not, you know, just to get the crowd warmed up, um, so it was alright, it's okay, um, moving on, okay, and the next match, um, you had, um, Allison Kay. Who, of course, you know, is Sienna in uh, TNA, and I guess she's the champion. So I told her, hey, I may have to start watching, um, you know, TNA again. I've taken a break from it, you know, um, just because it's just not, not as good. And they suffer from a similar problem. They've lost so many of the stars, um, and they've just kind of gotten into a rut lately, and there have been some financial issues. But anyway, uh, Sienna... But, you know, uh, she was definitely Allison Kay, even though she dresses exactly the same as she does on the uh, Impact show. Um, she fought against Samantha Heights. And uh, Samantha Heights, um, I believe her uh, gimmick is uh, she's small, um, lost girl. And I guess it's a joke because she's very, very short. She's just a tiny person. Not as tiny as maybe like a Xander Bale, but she's definitely short, shorter. And, of course, she has very youthful appearance, very young-looking. And so, 
you know, I don't consider Allison K to be that, you know, she's not a, that giant, she's not Melanie Cruz, but, you know, she's definitely tall, she's definitely muscular, and so she kind of makes her look, uh, her opponent look very, very tiny and vulnerable. So, you know, it was a good underdog uh, singles match. You know, it was okay. It was fine. Um, I wasn't a huge Allison K fan, you know, uh, liked her better when she was, you know, she, she always came out, you know, with a uh, feathers and, you know, just like very full of herself, you know, with a pinky up in the air, you know, classy and whatever. She didn't make as many jokes this time, but she and Taylor made, you know, were just a great uh, heel tag team and the fans really heckled them a lot and it was fun. Uh, by herself, you know, um, she's competent enough, but it just doesn't have that same pizzazz and fun, you know. Um, so, anyway, I'll probably have to watch her in TNA and see uh, how she does there. So, okay. We have Ashley Lane against Taylor Hendricks. Now, this was a surprise for me because Taylor Hendricks, you know, I remember her. She appeared in TNA briefly. She was in kind of one of those uh, gut check things back when they were doing those, you know, uh, take some indie wrestler and bring him in for a tryout, you know, kayfabe tryout match. And I think she appeared in the uh, one night only uh, knockouts, knockdown, maybe one or two of those. Um, and then, uh, when Ring of Honor was briefly on television, you know, it's gone back and forth through different, uh, ways of seeing it, rather than just the live shows or streaming or whatever. Um, they, uh, you know, they had her on there, Veda Scott was on there as well, but they were both valets, they weren't, uh, active wrestlers, so it's kind of disappointing, because I was thinking, oh, she's gonna wrestle. And, uh, listen to something where, um, it was a podcast or something, she, she talked about how she kind of has an interesting appearance, you know, she has very, you know, distinctive features, almost looks kind of cartoony, you know, obviously she's a a human being, not a cartoon, but she, to her. And Cherry Bomb also kind of noticed that, and she, I guess the two of them are related, uh, they're distant cousins or something, and it's like, yeah, they, that person kind of looks like me, you know, they just have large eyes, and just the way the shape of their mouth, you know, just... Which I guess, you know, is great when you're in showbiz, because you're trying to get people's attention. And uh, Taylor Hendricks, you know, she wears bright makeup, and She's kind of pale skin, so she's very, you know, uh, she catches your attention. But anyway, um, so I hadn't seen her wrestle in a long time, and it was like, great. It's like, oh, what a surprise. And then you get, you know, um, you know, Ashley Lane back, you know. I don't think she's been a part of Shimmer since uh, that volume 41 through 44 weekend, you know, with her match against Nevaeh. Um, so it was like the two of them, you know, kind of like two veterans, uh, two TV uh, wrestlers who have made it uh, wrestling. Um, I guess uh, the look, you know, a lot of these uh, women wrestlers, you know, it was much more, I think there was a lot more pressure on them. Just like for the male wrestlers, the pressure was to use steroids or, uh, you know, other performance enhancing drugs to make their muscles look very large because it's all about appearances, you know, um, to attract attention. And for the female wrestlers, it was to get the uh, uh, breast implants, uh, surgery, uh, plastic surgery. Um, which, you know, um, it's kind of sad, you know, people, because both of those things, of course, the steroids more so, have, you know, adverse health effects, and you know, you're changing your body uh, for the sake of, you know, brief fame, but, um, and, you know, not to criticize, because whatever, but uh, it seems like she's had some kind of work done, um, her appearance has changed uh, quite a bit, um, but anyway, um, you know, if she can wrestle, that's kind of all that, that matters for the, for the show. So, you know, they had an okay match. I was never that big a fan of, of Madison Rain and TNA. You know, she was kind of someone that you love to hate just because she's so uh, bad. But, you know, Ashley Lane, you know, she was, you know, I had to go back and watch her matches through her, you know, uh, time with Nevaeh. And they were a lovable tag team. Um, you know, they, they did fine. You know, she improved a lot. Um, and then coming back, you know, showing her skill. There were some parts in their matches where the crowd was kind of dead. And I don't know if it's because uh, they didn't watch TNA or they didn't remember her. I mean, the fans are supposed to be so smart. They're supposed to remember everything, right? And they're supposed to know exactly who she is. Anyway, I do notice um, at the various shows, you know, sometimes that when the people come back from TNA or whatever, everyone's like, yeah, because I've seen you on TV. You're more famous. Um, but I don't know. But, you know, she started to get some of the magic back. I think there were some dead points in the match here, but, you know, later on in the evening, I think she got some more uh, love, some more attention. Uh, same with Taylor Hendricks. So, you know, they did all right, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest match ever. It was just okay. Uh, so moving on, 
Uh, next match, cheerleader Melissa um, against Savannah Evans. Now, Savannah Evans is not someone I'd seen before, but uh, when you looked at her, you know, she, she definitely looks like someone who's been working out. Uh, impressive, you know, uh, physique. Um, and, you know, <laughs> when he started, and if you're talking again about plastic surgery, I have no idea, okay? I, I'm not a tabloid journalist. I have no idea uh, what uh, plastic surgery or or not that uh, cheerleader Melissa has gotten, but uh, certainly the way she was dressed, her kind of her outfit suggested that possibly uh, that was the case. And um, at the beginning of the match, you know, Samantha uh, Evans um, kind of like just kind of looked at her opponent's chest and kind of went, hmm. And she kind of looked down at her own chest and was like, hmm. And then they started fighting. So it was just kind of a moment where it was like, yeah, that's the elephant in the room. Uh, anyway, and then they wrestled. So whatever. You know, they have to come up with these things probably on the spot. You know, they don't plan them out months in advance. Uh, they just kind of do what they do. But it was a good match. I mean, Melissa, sometimes I forget, you know, really how tall and how, you know, built she is. Um, and so when you compare her with some of, you know, it, they tend to do extremes. You know, there's very tall, muscular women, and then there's the very small, kind of slightly built women. And they put them in these matches. Sometimes you'll have the two small women against each other, or two large women. And in, in this case, it was. And it's just like, they're both very uh, big. And, you know, they're up on the stage, you know, they're kind of like, you know, they're, they, they look like they're really, really tall. Um, so anyway, so they had, you know, a lot of power moves. And, of course... Melissa goes back and forth between heel and face, but, you know, really her move set and everything is designed towards her being kind of a bad uh, person. And that's kind of how she started. You know, she started out and she was a heel and mischief was a face. And it was kind of like the opposite before that. You think, oh, Melissa's this heroic um, cheerleader, yay! And then mischief is ah, evil, ah, you witch, you know. But then it was the opposite, you know. Mischief became the fan favorite and Melissa was the, was the heel. And so I think Melissa works well as a heel. And uh, Savannah Evans, you know, eager to prove herself, uh, but ultimately uh, being defeated. And I would say this was a good match. I don't remember a whole lot of, you know, specific, you know, moves. It was kind of like, Melissa just kind of runs through her different moves. Um, but she certainly um, allowed this woman to, you know, show that, you know, she was tough and, and the two of them could, could uh, you know, go at it um, on an even playing field. But, you know, experience wins out. Uh, so next uh, match we have a Shotzi Blackheart. Now I first saw her on the previous volume, uh, video on demand. Uh, she is the Phoenix of Rise, not Rise of Phoenix, but Phoenix of Rise champion um, for one of this you know rookie uh, federation, whatever. And she went against Hudson Envy, and I didn't catch the name at first. I'm like, the heavy metal tattooed pit bull. That's really your name. Um, but no, it's Hudson Ev Envy. And so let me describe the wrestlers to you, you know, if you can look up the pictures, but I like to just describe. So Hudson Envy, she comes out and she's just like, dun da da and she like jumps up in the air and she kind of like lands, like not doing the splits, but kind of like with her knees out and she has this, uh, the title belt and she's like doing like bench presses with it and she's like, yeah, and then she's got this really long, uh, bright and, you know, bright makeup and, you know, uh, tons of, like, eyeshadow and, um, and she has this big helmet. I, I, it almost looks like a, like a World War II German, uh, helmet, but it has these little, like, antlers, little horns on it. And she doesn't look like a comedy figure, and she's got, like, the biker jacket and the fishnet, you know, pattern. These big, long boots, like, um, AJ Lee used to wear these long, laced-up boots. She's a very striking figure. And it's, I just pictured, like, she went to the trial and was like, okay, I'm going to make the biggest impression I possibly can. I'm going to overact and just dress up in this big costume and just be really over the top. But it works. Of course, now when you first see her, you might think, oh, she's, like, evil. She's like, eh, she's a, I mean, Shotzi, black, black heart, heart, sounds evil. Shotzi kind of sounds like a Nazi. You think of, like, a Nazi helmet. But, she you know, she's just kind of this lovable, yay, you know, fighter heroic person so great she's the face um and then her opponent hudson envy also a rookie obviously uh you know really spent a lot of time trying to develop a character she um she has kind of a, an accent you know um 
Well, Shotzi, you know, she she um, looks like she's of Asian ancestry, but uh, you know, no idea what her ethnicity is. Uh, I just assume she's American or Canadian or whatever. Usually the case may be, but um, uh, Hudson Envy, she had a bit of an accent. Uh, I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be Russian. Someone said Russian behind me. I, they have, may have had no idea what they were talking about, but um, everything, it looked very uh, Aquino-esque. Like she was inspired, like a, you know, Aquino kind of dresses like a Power Ranger. She's kind of a butch, you know, um, Joshi wrestler. Uh, so, you know, she had her hair, you know, closely cropped and kind of like almost like a little like buzz cut and a little sway to the side, a little mohawk kind of thing. And she, a lot of tattoos in English, uh, little phrases and inspirational little things. And, um, you know, her outfit looked like a Power Ranger, has kind of the, like the little um, shoulder pad wing things and, you know, like long uh, kick pads and everything. Her, the whole presentation and, and she even, some of the things she said, you know, like, you break the hold, you know, and she's like, okay, you know, she, and, and missile drop kicks. She, like, was like a Westerner trying very hard to be like a Joshi wrestler. And so I, I appreciated it. I mean, because we didn't have any Joshi wrestlers uh, on the um, card. Uh, so it was like, okay, well, we got someone imitating them. That's fine. I mean, Sarah Del Rey did it. Uh, it was fine. You know, it's it's great to take inspiration. You know, West inspires East, and East inspires West. I mean, Kana, uh, one of the big stars from Japan, you know, loves American culture, and she's always um, dipping into that. It's great. Um, sharing, uh, diversity, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so the two of them, great look for both wrestlers. Um, match was okay. Um, <laughs> one of the catchphrases Hudson Envy uses, she's like, no more babies. Like, she, like, punched the opponent, like, in the abdomen or something. No more babies. Um, and, you know, the, the, uh, she got some heckling. And, uh, actually, you know, it was it, fans started cheering for her. And you could tell she was really concerned about her craft because she would she would stop. And she would stare at the fans. And she would act like she was leaving the ring. Like, like, she, like she didn't, you know, like she was reacting to it. Um, she wasn't just going to ignore them or go, oh, well, I guess everyone likes me, fine. Um, which is what some wrestlers would do. So she uh, definitely tried to get the fans to not like her. And she definitely tried to be tough and, um, you know, fight on. And, of course, Shotzi was trying to be the fan favorite. And in the two of them, sometimes they botched their moves. I think both these wrestlers, they made some mistakes, but they tried to, like, they try to turn it into another move. They try to recover from it and uh, keep on going. So consummate professionals. So I'm not sure what it's like at this wrestling school, but if that's the kind of talent they're putting out, then I think they'll do well because they're really trying, um, and I can't fault them for it. And if I didn't know anything about wrestling, I might just think, oh, two couple of characters, but, you know, just, just um, examine it on maybe that other level. So good things are hopefully in the works for both of them and others at this Rise School Academy, whatever you want to call it, tryout program. So good luck to them. I think it's uh, it's uh, Soraya Knight has something to do with it and some other people, but I don't know much about it. I guess that show was on Friday. There was an actual show of the Rise people, and they took some of them to be on the main Shimmer show. So I guess it kind of functions like Sparkle in, in a way. Uh, but anyway on the main show so hopefully they'll be on the digital versal disc as well uh, be, uh, hoping of good things from these people you know that we'll see in the future um next, next uh this would have been more of a surprise um maybe uh earlier uh, but uh i i kind of was spoiled for this cat power she's back you know she debuted around uh 2008 and until 2010, I believe. She was, she was basically a rookie then. Um, I felt like she lost all the time, but, you know, it didn't matter. It was kind of like Mercedes never being the champion. It was like, and of course now she is, but spoiler. Uh, spoilers throughout this, of course, um, is that, you know, it didn't matter because it was like Cat Power is going to go in and she's going to try again, and it doesn't matter. She, she, it's all about the fight for her. You know, and she's a heel. She just does what she does. And she's not a pushover. She'll definitely work the person over, but uh, not often a winner. But then, you know, I found out that actually she has won, like, a lot of matches, especially recently. And, you know, she's totally changed her look. I mentioned this on Volume uh, 91 streaming uh, video, how, you know, she has 
you know, for a while she wore this cat mask. She was like Catwoman. And before that, you know, she just was Cat Power, but Catherine Power, her name, you know. Um, but she actually became a Catwoman, and then she had, she has this, like, war paint over her eyes. As if it were a mask that was painted on. And she comes in and she kind of, like, acts, like, cat-like in the, in the ring. And, like, she's stalking her prey like she's a, like a big cat. Not like a little house cat. But anyway, I, I like Cat Power. Um, you know, she's an attractive woman and she, uh, doesn't rely on her looks to, to get herself over. She uses her character and her wrestling ability, which has improved significantly. So, uh, good to see her. Anyway, uh, so she's here. And she, I guess, I, I, seems like, I, you know, I thought she'd retired. I don't know why, I must have totally misheard that. She just trained in Japan and did all kinds of things. So now she's kind of big on the scene. And, you know, some of these wrestlers, they just wrestle for, you know, maybe seven or eight years, and then they retire to have a family or something, but whatever they want to do, you know, or sometimes, sadly, you know, injury uh, forces them to retire. Um, but uh, Cat Power against Nicole Matthews. And Nicole Matthews, you know, she's gone from, you know, this slimy uh, comedic heel to, you know, kind of a tough woman her in her own right, but she's goes back and forth, and she's kind of someone we love to hate and... Uh, you know, kind of a tomboy in spite of herself. Uh, but anyway, Nicole Matthews, always hateable. Um, she's there, and uh, we also have Delilah Doom, someone I'd never seen before. Small woman, um, sh you know, with a, like, she's dressed like an 80s, like, um, aerobics enthusiast. Let's put it that way. So very weird, headband, you know, rah, 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 you know, doing moves kind of thing and uh let's see who was with her oh leva bates oh yes so leva bates she's a small woman she she uh, used to be uh, tag team partners with allison danger of course danger is now a backstage personality instead of an active wrestler due unfortunately to many uh, brain injuries serious in injuries uh she can't wrestle ever again uh so they say but uh, Leva Bates, always a lovable kind of, kind of a lovable heel. Because, you know, she cheats in her matches. She kind of has underhanded tactics, and her shtick is always she has a gimmick. She's like a cosplayer. She'll come out dressed as some character from popular culture, comic book, TV show, movie. And she'll try to act like that character in the ring. She'll try to get the fans to, like, joke along with her, laugh along with her. And then at some point she fails because... She really doesn't have superpowers. She really isn't that character. She's just a small person dressed up like a big, you know, superhero. And she gets beaten down. And sometimes, you know, she does come back. She hasn't had really super epic matches, but she sometimes acts a little arrogant. She sometimes slips in like a cheating move here or there. And Alice in Danger was like that too. You know, she would kind of encourage her to break the rules. Um, but, uh, you know... That's kind of how what she does. But this time she came out as Richard Simmons, you know, the fitness guru sweating to the oldies, that kind of guy, uh, which I haven't seen in the media very much. But, you know, she had, like, a fake, like, curly wig that she wore over her hair. And there were a couple times in the match, um, well, getting into the match, but she was dressed like Richard Simmons. And just like when she dressed as Charlie Chaplin and was dancing, and K uh, Thunder Kitty was like, oh, Charlie! It's really you. Like, and it's obviously not, but, you know, she fooled her and get it, got her on her side. So Delilah Doom, obviously a, uh, you know, uh, aerobics uh, exercise enthusiast, and she thinks it's really Richard Simmons. Oh, I'm your biggest fan. You're my hero. And she had, like, this T-shirt with Richard Simmons' face on it, and they were, they were doing, like, a little aerobics dance together, and they actually started playing music, and they were, like, you know, doing stuff, and they were trying to get the, uh, other wrestlers to participate, and they were just like, huh? Mm, no. Attack. Uh, so we had, um, yeah, and Nicole Matthews, it was just kind of, like, shaking her head, like, this is so dumb. This is so stupid. And Nicole Matthews has the funniest facial expressions of any wrestler that I've seen in Shimmer, even in Cherry Bomb. Uh, and she says so funny, so she does such a great job, but <clears throat> anyway, Never gonna get through these. Uh, sorry. So, um, you know, they, they were they were out there, and so there's this silliness, this com comedic uh, thing, and of course the heels just let's get the fight going. And there were various points where um, 
Leva Bates got her hair pulled and so I think a fan said this and it's not even a real hair. She's pulling the hair and the referee always says, stop pulling the hair. Oh, and referees wise, you know, um, it's uh, PJ Drummond, some guy named Coin, and the fans, the Smarks, are always like, who are you? Which is funny the first time, but the tenth time he comes out, don't yell, who are you? You already know who it is. It's, it's the referee. We've seen him before. He was just in the previous, you know, two matches or whatever. Um, but Brian Gorey wasn't there. Uh, Bryce Renzerg wasn't there. Um, so we missed out on some of the... And, it, and I think it was um, not Joey Eastman, but what was the guy's name? I forget the announcer's name. Uh, I'll, it'll come back to me. But anyway, some different, uh, different uh, people there working the show. Um, Amber Gertner on commentary and, and Dave Prezak in the Night Times, Veda Scott, and we'll get to hear that a year from now when it comes out, or if they get it out faster. Great. Um, but uh, you had this match, and I've complained about this before, so I don't want to be a broken record. Um, and no, I'm not going to complain about the, you know, um, the, uh, the ring, the disgusting uh, uh, ring that they're forced to use from the Eagles Club with the dirt and the tears and it no it's not about that it's about this concept of the uh, unfriendly tag team fatal four-way match where you've got four wrestlers who are not really allied with each other in any way and two of them are in the ring at a time and the other they have to tag the person in well it's a silly concept but they keep doing it in shimmer and i guess it's just a way for them to get you know four wrestlers in the ring not necessarily at the same time, um, whatever, and just to show off their particular... But, um, you know, uh, whatever. It is what it is. They played it off for laughs this time. They had, you know, cat power, kind of acting like a, an actual cat. Like she would just be so focused on the wrestling match she wasn't paying attention. And Nicole Matthews would tag herself in. And then Nicole Matthews would kind of, you know, she was a coward. And, you know, they'd just keep tagging each other back and forth. And it just kept happening. Um, and Leva Bates got beat down, and that's all that matters to me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but anyway, eventually, uh, the wig got pulled off. Um, and it, but it was just like her, 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 uh, hair kept getting pulled. Oh, you know, I forgot Andy Long. Poor Andy Long. You know, they never explained this in storyline, but there were some matches. I believe it was this 76 or 79 weekend where, and I forget if he refereed this match. Sorry. You know, the referee's supposed to blend in. You don't remember him. Um, even though he's such a important part of the of every match um but the um andy long you know he all these uh wrestlers especially, especially the joshi wrestlers i believe it was yumi oka was just like whipping people in the face right in front of him and uh sweet sarai kicking people in the crotch you know right in front of him and he, he doesn't do anything he doesn't disqualify them i mean maybe it's the wrestler's fault maybe it's the booker's fault it's someone's fault but of course they're in in storyline uh the referee is supposed to maintain order and he's like he's terrible so poor andy long uh, he comes out and everyone, you know, boo, boo, boo. Andy, you suck, you're terrible. There was one point, though. I think it was the coin uh, guy, this other referee. He had such a bad match. And it was just, just because, you know, he can't restore order. And I don't know what the dynamics of that are. But but that chant started up, we want Andy. <laughs> like, he's so bad that even Andy Long would be better at this point. I hope they eventually do try to explain it. Maybe a throwaway line backstage segment where they interview him and it's like, what's going on? You know, why are you so corrupt? Or why are you such a bad referee? Whatever. You know, the umpire is always, umpire is always at fault. Whatever. Uh, bad calls. The fans know it better. But whatever. Um, anyway. All that aside. This match, you know, they did the best they could, I think, with a silly concept. You know, this unfriendly tag team thing. Um... I gotta say, uh, it was nice to see Cat Power win for a change. Um, but again, I guess she's been winning, so whatever. I hadn't seen a win, so I was like, yay, uh, excited. Because I don't want Nicole Matthews to win. Uh, and, uh, you know, Leva Bates is kind of silly. And uh, the, the new girl, you know, she's not that good. Um, but, you know, great job on the character. Again, if she's one of these rookies, uh, great job uh, making it work. But, you know, you gotta... You can be a lovable kind of goof, but you gotta really try hard. You know, gotta be, you know... Lou Fisto is a good example. I mean, she was comedic. Well, and Kelly Skater, too, until she got serious. 
Um, you know, in, in well, Tomoka Nakagawa, of course, she's Joshi, so she automatically has some street cred. But, you know, you, you have these wrestlers where they have a kind of a comedic kind of um, interaction with the fans and kind of presentation. But they still, you know, they're still a credible threat. They're still a credible, you know, wrestler. And you believe that they can rise above and, and be powerful. And, and, you know, Leva Bates is getting to that point. She does get to that point in many of her matches. She isn't just a joke. You know, she really is trying. And so, um, you know, someone like that, Delilah Doom, you know, she can do it, uh, too. So, uh, there's that. Moving on. Um, yes. Let's see. Kevin Harvey, is that the, uh, announcer's name? Well, anyway. Um, of course, he's bald, just like Joey Eastman, so I guess that's why I got the job. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, I, I miss, uh, his interactions with uh, Sweet Soraya. Poor fellow. But anyway, um, next we had uh, Fire and Ice, which this tag team is not familiar with, but it was a Britt Baker and a Chelsea Green. Um, you know, these two, um, uh, you know, they didn't really have a big gimmick, just, uh, you know, some uh, women wrestlers. Um, they were against uh, Paradise Lost, which was Courtney Rush, um, uh, of course, who goes by Rosemary, uh, formerly of the D Decay faction in TNA. And, you know, she brought her character over. They called her the Demon Hunter Courtney Rush, not Rosemary. Uh, but she's had the makeup, and she's kind of the staggering, crazy, you know, Marilyn Manson listening, zombie witch, Daphne, split personality kind of person. You know, I like her character. It's very distinctive. You know, Courtney Rush, you know, she's such a chameleon with her different characters. Uh, she does what she does. She's definitely talented, and uh, she definitely has fun with it. Um, and then she was with Angel Dust. You know, she, um, I bet this uh, this woman at the, um, you know, autograph thing at the intermission, they always have this intermission in the middle of the show where you can uh, get, you know, autographs, meet the wrestlers, kind of whatever. But um, she... Uh, went by some other name, and she told me the name, and I forgot completely. And I'm sorry, but um, anyway, she goes by Angel Dust now. And there is a male wrestler with the same exact name, Angel Dust. Don't know anything about him, but I know he's out there. Because I was trying to find bio on her, and I kept finding this other person. But anyway, Angel Dust um, looks strikingly like um, a young uh, Daisy Hayes. Uh, very small, very slender, uh, long, straight blonde hair. Uh, kind of a, you know, not a lot of makeup, you know, she, uh, Angel Dust, you know, it definitely, um, I hate to say it, dredge up old arguments, you know, a little bit healthier than uh, Daisy Hayes did. So I hope whenever, um, you know, Daisy Hayes is doing well these days, I hope she's healthy. I hope this woman is healthy as well. I uh, don't want anyone to be, you know, suffering from, you know, uh, anything uh, like, you know, self-inflicted or whatever or otherwise. Uh, but anyway, uh, small woman, but um, the two of them are in a faction together. They call it the Hive. So Angel Dust is like the uh, student. You know, she doesn't have crazy makeup on or anything. She just kind of looks like a, I don't know, a skater girl or something. But uh, the two of them are a faction, you know, heel faction. And, you know, uh, uh, Courtney Rush, you know, kind of like puts her palm on her forehead and is like, ah, like I'm giving you my power or something. And then Angel Dust is like, yes, you know, like goes along with her, like her, um, her second or something. And then uh, they had this uh, tag team match, finally a real tag team match. Uh, it was good. And, you know, the Fire and Ice, you know, they kept, uh, they had these, you know, custom t-shirts. And, you know, they have these, you know, we're best friends tag team. And they dress alike and they you kind of can't tell one from the other. And, um, they did okay, and but I think that the heels were such standout characters. Um, but the heels lost. The good guys won, as they were supposed to in the just world. So, um, that was alright. Um, I was, I was, uh, certainly getting into it. Um, but, uh, you know, tag team matches, you know, um, they can be overdone, and sometimes they don't get enough attention. But, you know, this was competently done. And, you know, you had, uh, I'm not sure the experience level of the, um, the, um, face team, uh, Britt Baker and Chelsea Green, uh, but certainly Courtney Rush, very experienced. Um, and then Angel Dust uh, seems to be a newer wrestler. Although she's been around for a few years. Uh, moving on to the next one. 
you know, again, not a not a ton of like amazing matches. Um, you know, certainly for Shimmer, you know, still generally good. Other than the recognizable faces, usually the TV matches are not uh, as good as you know even mediocre uh, Shimmer matches. Um, but uh, you know, just not. I mean, I wouldn't pay all my money just to see this uh, particular match. I'll put it that way. So next we have Diana Perrazzo, uh, kind of average-looking uh, girl. Um, you know, wrestler, and then Cherry Bomb, of course, with her. She didn't do as much shrieking. Normally, she just talks in a really high-pitched, whiny voice, purposely to try to annoy the fans. And, of course, she's bad. And Kimberly, you know, I haven't seen her in a while, but she wasn't there with her. So just Cherry Bomb. Um, kind of a forgettable match. Uh, honestly, not a huge fan of Cherry Bomb. I mean, I respect her and her work. I haven't watched TNA to see her as... Um, is it Ario or Ario? Something like that. Um, but she has, um, well, she was Laura Dennis, which is her name. And then she uh, got this other name, and I forget what it was. But I haven't been watching TNA, so I can't tell you about that. Um, didn't really, wasn't a big deal with this match. I think th this might have been the part where the smocks were starting to annoy me, and I was distracted from the match. Don't remember much about it. Sorry, I'll have to watch it again when the digital versatile disc comes out. And maybe if I have additional thoughts, I'll, uh, Maybe put up another video uh, with those. Uh, next, we have Lufisto against Casey Spinelli. And with this one, you know, I kind of had a hard time. I mean, Lufisto is a good actress. She's a good wrestler. Even with her French-Canadian accent, you know, she, um, thick accent. Um, she is bad now. I think I asked her about the, uh, you know, at the intermission. You know, he, you went bad over the year. And she's kind of like, me. You know, like, really, me? Because she always played this fun-loving, kind of goofball character, kind of a half-crazy, like, little girl trapped in a woman's body, kind of goofball. And she would cheat and stuff, but kind of like a, a, a naughty child, rather than, you know, genuinely evil. Well, now she's like a tough, you know, biker, babe, you know, uh, take no prisoners. She's the one-woman army, she's the uh, wounded owl. She was the Wounded Owl Ronin, and I kept getting that wrong, and my review was saying the wrong thing. She's the, the Wounded Owl, and, um, you know, she has different outfits. She doesn't dress like an owl, but she did have an owl mask at one point, a little feathery mask she took off, and she cheats. But the thing is, what's hard for me is, I mean, Lufista is one of my favorite uh, women's wrestlers, uh, still active today, and, you know, when, when they're a heel, you gotta boo them. Because they're dastardly. But the thing was, when uh, Lefisto was a was a face, she was still cheating. She was still breaking the rules, bending the rules. She was still, you know, had uncouth tactics. You know, she was still a little crazy, a little scary. And so it's kind of like, what has changed? Now she just doesn't mean spirited. I mean, I think her promos are basically like she's sick and tired. People not giving her, you know, the respect she deserves. She's been wrestling so long, and she deserves to um, rise to the top and, you know, become a champion. And, you know, she, she, it's like these other, these newbies, these rookies are beneath her, you know, and, uh, and so forth. Which is, you know, fine. Someone yelled, pipe bomb, behind me, which is so cheesy. I guess they, they, they did mention CM Punk there, sort of. Um, you know, CM Punk, you know, has admitted that that thing was, you know, they often encourage, you know, wrestlers to kind of say what they mean, just play up reality, blur the lines, you know, whatever. But it's still, it's still fake, it's still staged, uh, whatever. But it seems more real, I guess, sometimes. So, um, has Lufisto been passed over? I don't know. I mean, if Lufisto was never the champion, I'm okay with that. You know, she's still entertaining to watch. I still love her matches. Uh, she just puts so much into it. But, you know, it's kind of like with those wrestlers, you know, when they're about to retire and they just become the champion just for a day. Just kind of as a, a an extra way to say, you know, to honor them. Say, yeah, you, you get a chance to do it. Um, you can say you've done it now. Um, Kelly Skater. It was with a bit of sadness that I, I learned. It's like, well, she, she's not here. And they even mentioned in the show, they said, well, Kelly Skater's not here. And, you know, I'd heard, you know, spoilers, she'd become the champion. And she's retired. She's retired. Tomoka retired, and then she retired. And I thought, she's really young. Well, she looks really young. She, I, 
you know, maybe she was really injured. Of course, who knows? Maybe she wanted to start a family. She could have her own personal reasons for it, but she's retired. Uh, she had a retirement ceremony, uh, I assume some kind of retirement match, which I'd love to watch, you know, at Lech Lake Tomoka and Hiroyo Matsumoto. Um, and, uh, and it was in at Oz Academy, I believe, in Japan uh, earlier this year. So Kelly Skater's retired. Anyway, um, so I don't know. Lou Fisto, you know, some years back, uh, it sounded like she was retiring. She um, published some post, I don't know if it was on Twitter, on a website or something, but it was basically like, you know, wrestling and, you know, her long career and her many injuries, and it was kind of like, you know, she's, it's it's done. She's, she's, she's selling her gear off. That's usually the same. You know, they sell their outfits. You know, it's done. Uh, moving on with my life. And it was like, nope, nope. She, and it wasn't like a work, like, ha, I fooled you. But it's just, she, whatever, for whatever reason, she decided to stay. Uh, kept on wrestling. And she's still wrestling to this day. But I just sort of figure, you know, it's one of these things, um, one of these times, it may just be like, nope. Lufisto's done with wrestling. She's retired. And that'll be a sad day for fans. I mean, yes, you can go back and watch the old matches, but it's like Kelly Skater, you know? Um, you know, she, she gets uh, gets to the top, and then she's done. Um, they wrestle for like eight years, and then they retire. And I suppose, you know, it's better for your health because, you know, you're not, you know, taking huge bumps, you know, uh, into your later years when you can't uh, recover so easily and you know, mistakes happen and... You could uh, be badly injured or crippled for life. Uh, but you only do it for a few years. You have some fun. You know, get some fame. And then you go do something else with your life. You know, it's not so dangerous. Because wrestling is, you know, even though it's staged, everybody knows, you know, things go wrong. And every sport, you know, you have injuries, sports-related injuries. And as you get older, you know, it's harder to avoid those and recover so quickly. You know, and there can be substance abuse issues connected with, you know, painkillers uh, from many injuries and trying to work while you're injured because you're trying to make money and so forth. So, you know, maybe early retirement is a, is a, from wrestling anyway, is a good thing. But still, you know, as a fan, you feel some loss there. So, I don't know, I expect Lufisto, you know, whatever time we get with her in the ring is, is bonus time. Because she could have retired a long time ago. It'd be like Ozzy Osbourne, retire and come back and retire and come back. It's like it's in the blood, you know, you just can't quit. But, you know, I don't want to see, you know, her forced to retire because of, a, of an injury. Um, let, let it be on her own time. But anyway, she's bad now. And it's hard to hate her, but her thing is, she, uh, she'll she win the match. And when she wins the match, then she'll beat her opponent down some more. And that's just the worst. Because, you know, she would cheat when she was a face. And she cheats now as a heel. But... When she beats them up after the match, it's like, okay, that's it. Now it's time to boo her. So I'm booing you, Lufisto. I'm booing you. So, still <laughs> great. Um, but, you know, she's trying to put other people over. Now, Casey Spinelli. This is, she is like those fans that wear the big colorful hats, except in wrestling form. You know, she's definitely trying to put herself over. She actually came out with a megaphone. It was a toy megaphone, and I think the batteries, I don't know, there were no batteries in it, or the batteries weren't working. She would yell into it, and you obviously didn't hear anything. And then she would put it put it up to the uh, fan's mouth and be like, yell into it. And then they'd be like, you, and you couldn't hear anything. And then she would do it the next person. Like, she just kept on playing it along. Like, I don't know what what's going on. And then at the end of the match, you know, Lufisto beat her. And I like Casey Spinelli. She's super friendly, tons of energy. Really looks like she's having a good time. Or she's at least pretending convincingly to have a good time. And it's, it's contagious, you know, it's exciting. Um, she's definitely happy to be there. Uh, she makes you glad that she's there. But Lufisto, like, picked up the megaphone and she, like, tried to do it and there was nothing. And she, like, opened it up and, I don't know, there was either no batteries or the batteries were dead. And so she just kind of, like, eh, set it down. So I thought she was going to yell some, like, insult into it at her. I think this was an Andy Long match because there was one point she, like, insulted him. She said, like... You know, like, get out of my face. You know, it looks like there's nothing long in those pants or something. I just, whoa. That was one of those, like, you know, you're watching a sitcom. I always hate the laugh tracks on those sitcoms from the 80s and 90s. It's so annoying. It's like telling you when, when to laugh and when to not. But, you know, one character would say something really insulting to the character. They'd go like, ooh. Like, I can't believe they said it. Whoa. 
So um, there was a moment like that when one of the fans, I think, insulted Tessa Blanchard at a later match. Said like, "You look like Alexa Bliss," and everyone was like, "Ooh," <laughs> and her expression was priceless. But getting ahead of myself. So Lou Fisto defeated Casey Spinelli, beat her down after the match, got some booze, deservedly so. Now we move on to Tessa Blanchard and Vanessa Craven. Mount Craven was the uh, flub that the announcer said his name was Mount Tessa. And they were against WDSS. Fire, uh, not fire, nice. WDSS, uh, Mia Yim, and Kaylee Ray. Now, Kaylee Ray, high flying, um, thin uh, woman, uh, small, and she always stands up on the barricade. Mia Yim, uh, much larger, much taller than, than she is, but both of them would like stand up on the uh, barricades and they get like a fan to like hold their hands so they don't fall. Um, of course, Kaylee Ray easily can do it because she's so small, slightly built. But uh, they both did it, so it's kind of fun. Both very acrobatic. Mia Yim, you know, grown on me over the years. Uh, she was that rookie. Um, fun loving person, uh, fun to talk to, uh, gives good uh, promos. And, you know, the two of them together, perfectly a great a tag team. Now, <coughs> Tessa Blanchard was like, well, you know, I am, you know, descended from Tully Blanchard, the great, you know, legendary wrestler, and I'm so great, and all this kind of thing. But then in her matches, she basically has Vanessa Craven, this very tall, you know, um, monster woman, do all the work for her, and orders her around, and then tries to take credit for it. And she actually, you know, like, nasty and bossy towards her, and just really uh, despicable and annoying. Uh, it's like, well, it's like a cartoon, you know, couldn't the big big person like crush the little person ordering them around but never does it always threatens to gets close um so they they kind of fight with each other well the two of them have improved vastly especially tessa blanchard it's like she went from zero to a hundred she's now a very competent very vicious energetic powerful wrestler and i don't know if this she just got some more training i think she appeared briefly in nxt but she is hugely improved, and so I enjoy watching her now. I mean, she was fun for a while, but it's like, how long can they keep up this comedy routine um, and this change? And this first time I saw this was on 91. So, a joy to watch, credible threat, and they are the champions. And so, yes, they are underhanded. Yes, she still orders Vanessa Craven around, but Tessa Blanchard is a credible threat herself. And the two of them fight, but they, but it's still, it's, they still get the job done. And this was for the Shimmer Tag Team Championship. Uh, but the heels won. And I wasn't surprised because I thought, oh, they're going to hold on to it for a while. Until the breakdown, until the two of them fight each other. Uh, and Vanessa Craven gets sick of being pushed around. Uh, the little girl's like, no, Tessa, she's using you. You know, or no, um, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa she's, used, she's just using you. You know, don't listen to her. And of course they were just berating Tessa. So... You assume that eventually Vanessa Craven's going to turn good, and uh, I kind of hope that doesn't happen. You know, it's you always want the monsters to be bad, but whatever, she's a good monster. But for now, they're both bad, and and um, Tessa, you know, will get her just desserts. Um, but anyway, so uh, that was a good match, um, and then moving on, we had um, this was a match that was sort of set up. Because they had this long promo in the ring with the trifecta. Mercedes Martinez returns. And, you know, a bunch of stuff happened, I guess. Um, Madison Eagles was beaten by Mercedes Martinez. She And supposedly she did it in an underhanded way. Somehow she beat her down, got the title, and then Kelly Skater beat her. Took it from her, and, she, and Kelly Skater was briefly, briefly the champion. And then... Um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, um, Mercedes uh, beat Kelly Skater, took it back, and now she's had it ever since. Um, I, so I think it changed a couple of times, back and forth, um, and it was, I think it was just like, you know, Mercedes took the belt from Madison, Madison took it back, and somewhere in the between, I, you know, I'm going to have to go back and watch the volumes, but they're not out yet, it's just reading it on the internet. So, you know, and then Kelly Skater gets her run, and then she loses it again, and, and Mercedes has it now. The trifecta. And then Shayna Baszler, who has impressed me, you know, she comes out with her Queen of Spades MMA-inspired stuff, and, you know, she's got a mouth guard in, and she's really cocky, and, 
you know, she, she has improved in by leaps and bounds. You know, I accept her as a professional wrestler. She's obviously had a lot of training. She's not just an MMA fighter, you know, just out here for publicity like TNA. Sorry. They, they always had these MMA fighters on TNA, and they just never went anywhere with them. So, and it's like, okay, fine, I'll watch MMA and not your show, I guess. Uh, but uh, Shayna Baszler, uh, doing well. And then, of course, you had Nicole Savoy, a great personality, um, cocky as all get out, um, talented, you know, high flyer. Uh, she's been through an injury, so she doesn't do as much of that at the moment, at least, while she's recovering. But a super talented, uh, Heart of Shimmer champion. So the three of them, super cocky heels, you know, and um, they wanted to fight against uh, Madison Eagles and uh, uh, Shaza McKenzie and Sweet Soraya Knight. And it was funny because when they were talking about this match before it actually happened, you know, Allison Danger was kind of arranging it. Um, this is where they mentioned Kelly Skater, you know, was, was gone. Didn't say retired, they said gone. Um, Mercedes was was talking trash to um, Madison Eagles, and Madison Eagles were just kind of playfully like putting her leg out, not saying a word, just like putting her leg out and like pushing, pushing Mercedes Martinez back while she was walking towards her talking. And it was just so funny because like other, not every wrestler would react that way. She wasn't breaking character or anything, but like some wrestler would be like, "What? You touched me!" Like start beating him down. Um, and Madison was not, like, like striking, like, trying to actually hit her, just, just like, oh, you're getting too close to me, I'm pushing you away with my leg, pushing you away, because she's, you know, she's a, she was a dancer, I think, she's, like, ballet trained or something, she's very versatile, tall, you know, scary looking, but also comedic, so it was just kind of funny, and Mercedes just kind of went along with it, she kept, kept talking, so she pushed away, and she comes across, and she pushed away, and, uh, uh Soraya, you know, talking trash, and she often does, and she's like, she's bad. She's, she's got, you know, bleeped out profanity on her shirt with the middle fingers, and she's always hitting people in the crotch and cheating. But she's like, um, she's a bad person, but she's, she's on our side. She's on the side of the good guys. And of course, you know, Madison is now a face, but you know, she was always a cheater for so long. And I still think the best champion that Sh uh, Shimmer's ever had, even though all the champions were great. Love Mischief, uh, love Sarah Del Rey. Uh, and, and, and so forth, but, and Sweet Soraya, just, you know, such a villain, um, but Madison Eagles just, just, just great as the champion, I think she was, she became a better wrestler when she was the, the champion, it was just amazing, I still like her, fans still love her, and Shaza McKenzie, poor little Shaza McKenzie, uh, they, some of the smocks, they were just talking about, like, she just keeps getting beaten down, and beaten down, and beaten down, and she's the underdog, she gets beaten down, beaten down, and they're just like, you're stupid, stay down, stop putting yourself in the situation where you get beaten down. But no, they treat it as, you know, she has heart, she's the soul of a champion, you know, she keeps getting up, and that's, that's the important thing. But these fans were just like, no, stop it, you know, you deserve it because you keep throwing yourself, stop getting up, you know, uh, whatever. But anyway, um, so the trifecta, and they, they were like, we're going to take all the belts. And I like this faction. I think they were they were cocky, you know. They could back it up, and you know, seeing them get stripped of their um, awards, uh, their ill-gotten, you know, because it, because it's like it goes back and forth. You know, that was satisfying. It goes back and forth between they're cowardly, and they're really good and a genuine threat. So it's like they're gonna avoid fighting as much as they can, but when back into the corner, they're gonna fight hard, and they're gonna be a challenge. But they might try to cheat to get an edge. So I think it's just it's just the right mix of you know heel psychology as wrestlers. So good for them uh, doing that. And of course Mercedes, you know the the elder stateswoman of the group, uh, the OG, you know um, getting the others, um, the two more rookie um, uh, wrestlers uh, to kind of follow her lead. And of course those little girls, you know, they just had so much back and forth with the trifecta. It was it was ridiculous and funny and entertaining at the same time, because uh, it was like a bunch of uh, people just you know beating their chests at each other and not just some adults talking down to some little kids. So that was the wrap up of um, oh I forgot the the results. So uh, the results were that uh, the trifecta got beaten. 
Yes. So the uh, the bad guys get a taste of their own medicine. Uh, they get taken down. And, you know, these are talented wrestlers, so, you know, it was an entertaining match. People were getting tired by this point, but I think that was it was a good way to end. Uh, and they warned everybody, hey, this is the last match uh, for that show. And the next one's coming up. So just a little break there. So uh, Volume 92, great show. Um, but, you know, it was kind of off to a rough start. Some of it was due to the uh, smocks. I don't know how much of that interplay with the children is going to get on the digital versal disc. But it was part of the live experience. Um, I enjoyed the show. Uh, it was a little hard to get back in after so much time. But uh, Shimmer, you did it again. You pulled it off. Uh, you had a successful night. And uh, the second half of the night will be coming up in my next... Uh... Hello, this is Lee back once again for another video. And continuing, even though my voice is tired, I'm tired, it's hot. You know, I've been through um, you know, a Shimmer weekend. Uh, well, just the Saturday um, Shimmer tapings. Um, you know, Sunday is concluded, uh, obviously, by this time. You know, people are heading home or whatever, digesting the pizza, hopefully relaxing somewhere um, after all their bumps and bruises. Hopefully there weren't any major injuries. You know, I haven't read the spoilers yet for Volume um, 94, 95, so I don't know who's retired or which uh, titles changed hands or, you know, whatever. If uh, Dave Prezak, you know, made a toast to someone or... I'm just joking. I have no idea what's happened. None whatsoever. I'll probably read it after I do this video. If it's up yet. I'm sure some enterprising fans and reporters have already posted it, but... <sighs> you know, I, I had a good time. Uh, I, I like it because, you know, I do the Saturday, go out to Berwyn, see the shows, enjoy myself, and then just kind of talk about it and get on with the rest of the week, you know? Uh, some fans, you know, they, they they fly in from all over the world and they see this whole weekend. I did the whole weekend thing one time, but it was just exhausting. I don't know how that people do it. I guess, you know, they're just be bigger fans than I am. But that's okay. And I did it once, and it was alright. So I'm okay with doing uh, a Saturday. And then, you know, it's kind of agonizing for a fan to have to wait a whole year to see the rest of the show um, on Digital Versal Disc. But those are the breaks. You know, they don't have billion dollar budgets for uh, Shimmer Women Athletes, so Dave Prezak and the rest of the people, I'm sure they're doing the best they can. So, um, after this, you know, it'll be back to the DVDs that have been previously released. I'll be talking about those, hopefully get some more done. Uh, be nice to get a few more out this summer. You know, so if we can be patient with them, you can be patient with me. You know, just a fan, talking about what I like to talk about. Wrestling, and video games, and movies, and other stuff, but wrestling. Yay! That guy. And th there was a moment in the match where I wanted to say, this is about the point in time where that guy who's been saying, wrestling! Yay! In the crowd, ever since Volume 1, I believe it was. Um, and I don't know if it predates Shimmer, but whatever. It started there, and it's just been going ever since. I was like, this is about the time he should be saying wrestling. Yay! And sure enough, someone said, wrestling! Yay! And people, and it's like people know what he's gonna say and they join in. So anyway, uh, first match, volume 93, uh, July 8th, 2017, Berwyn Eagles Club. Veda Scott. And you know, Veda Scott, you know, people have, have gathered that, um, you know, she is uh, a heel. And you know, her uh, skills on the mic have grown leaps and bounds. I think her time in Ring of Honor probably brought it, that out. She went from kind of a lovable goof with Shaza McKenzie, you know, kind of a, an underdog that, uh, you know, was kind of like, you know, you're stupid, you shouldn't keep getting up, you're getting beat up, whatever, you deserve it. Um, and she'd wrestle with her glasses, she'd take off her glasses, she couldn't see. Um, but anyway, she became kind of a heel, and, you know, she, she really is a good talker. And, you know, I my uh, respect for her as a performer has increased. She certainly is a better wrestler than she was. So good for her. Uh, she was against uh, uh, Ashley Lane. And you know, there was something, I'm trying to think if it was her promo. She started to give a promo where she was like, you know, it was going to be this emotional, like she gets a little bit choked up. And she's like, oh, you know, someone that's really, you know, helped me a lot uh, through this time. And, 
and everyone was like, boo boo, and they're like, oh 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 uh, oh, she's 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 serious. Oh, you know, I better listen. You know, oh, better be sympathetic. And then she kind of swerved us all. She was like, basically ripping apart uh, Ashley Lane, if I remember correctly, and like how she's kind of you know a part timer and you know uh, old and uh, washed up and you know not really worthy of her time. And then she kind of comes out, and everyone's like, yeah, you know, and it's like, um, and she's like, oh, just kidding, you know, uh, I'll certainly fight you some other time, not right now, and, you know, so good, good there. I think Ashley Lane didn't quite get the respect, you know, I was hoping for. I think she got a huge pop, as they call it, you know, huge reaction, uh, the first time she came back, but this time, not so much, and I think, I don't know, who knows? what the reason was for it, but, you know, it was still good to see her, uh, wrestle, uh, as, as it would go, but, uh, you know, it turned into, it's like, nope, you're gonna fight me now, and, uh, Veda Scott actually won, so, you know, kind of a surprise there, um, but anyway, you know, um, not, not a huge fan of either woman, but, you know, I can respect them as wrestlers and where they've come from, and they certainly have improved a lot, but, you know, again, uh, not every match, you know, is that standout of a match uh, on a show like this. You know, and, uh, you know, everybody's warmed up, but everybody's tired, too. Think about it. You know, seven hours of wrestling, uh, seven hours of wrestling, etc., etc. So moving on, the next match, um, we have Delilah Doom, you know, the um, fitness enthusiast. And guess who's going to be with her? Um, Leva Bates. And Leva Bates, in her usual cosplaying ways, comes out not as Richard Simmons this time, but as, I was thinking, Jane Fonda from, she had like this aerobics outfit, and she was like doing dance aerobics again. Uh, but instead of sweating to the oldies, she, they called her Olivia Newton-John. So I guess from Greece, uh, which I actually haven't seen. One of those movies everyone talks about, but I've never actually seen it. Uh, not all the way through. Uh, but... Whatever, dancing with John Travolta, you know, working out, feeling good. Uh, but anyway, so the two of them were, you know, busting some moves, doing some goofy, you know, high-energy exercise routines, and they incorporated this into the match, too. They were throwing, you know, um, they were tap dancing, and doing step aerobics on the fallen body of their opponent. They were dropping elbows, just kind of like Alice in Danger. The two of them used to do uh, kind of friendship elbow drop they both you know drop onto their opponent at the same time with the elbow extended um they were against uh, jessica troy and charlie evans now the two of them they're kind of the snotty mean girls eh, you know and so you know the two lovable goofs you know of course they're gonna be rooted for against the the bad girls and i think this is when the, the little girls were turning up their heckling powers and uh, kind of turning the tide against the smocks around this time and uh, Charlie Evans, good reactions, and good heckling ability, uh, counter heckling measures, counter measures for heckling, whatever. Uh, Jessica Troy, don't remember a whole lot about her, honestly. Um, hadn't seen her before. But uh, the two of them were defeated by the uh, the Jazzer size team, or whatever they want to call themselves, Delilah Doom and Leva Bates. Not a terribly memorable match, but you know they certainly, you know the crowd loved the the comedic. Uh, bits that they do and I think it's kind of like you know a game it's like are you ever going to run out of characters I hope not I hope not Leva Bates so keep it up and it's funny that she you know both of her characters were kind of drawn towards uh, making Delilah Doom you know squeal with delight you know to oh it's my hero you know and oh it's, she's dancing like me and exercising uh, fitness you know fun whatever so if you like serious wrestling, if you're Jim Cornette, you're probably furious by this point if you've seen this match. It's like, ah, oh, they're making a mockery of the business. Whatever. Age to their own. Uh, not everybody in the business shares the same opinion. Not every fan agrees with that sentiment. Whatever. Um, so next, we have... Um, next match, Nicole Matthews uh, against Samantha Heights. And of course, they, poor Samantha Heights, she's this tiny person. She looks like a little child in the ring. And of course, the little girls, you know... Of course, would cheer for her. She's one of their own, not really. I mean, poor Portia Perez. You know, she played up the I'm a young kid, not really angle. Uh, but uh, Samantha Heights definitely does look small. Um, and Nicole Matthews, of course, mocking her. And you know, um, I think they referred to Samantha Heights as Lost Girl. 
I thought, oh. and I'm surprised none of the smocks picked up on this. This would have been the perfect. She, she's even called Lost Girl. She's going to lose. Call her Win Girl or something. You know, whatever. Lost Girl. Like, well, she lost her way. She wandered into the wrestling ring. Oh, no. What's going to happen? Uh, so, of course, she was defeated by Nicole Matthews. Of course. Couldn't be any other way. Not much else to say there. Uh, next match, Hudson Envy against Deanna Perrazzo. Now, I, I like Hudson Envy's attention to detail and a character. Uh, Deanna Perrazzo, I think she had a, a Michael P.S. Hayes shirt, if I remember correctly. It said Hustle on it. I think, I think I'm remembering correctly. Uh, so the two of them had a match. Uh, Hudson Envy, you know, now my babies. You know, I, I'll get you with my missile dropkick. You know, it was fine. Uh, felt like two, two rookies, uh, but, you know, very, you know, they're trying really hard. I'll give him that. So, not a super amazing epic match, but just just fine, just uh, good. Uh, moving on, Shotzi Blackheart against cheerleader Melissa. And I thought by this time it's like, come on, Shotzi Blackheart. She's just a bunch of costume stuff and enthusiasm, but she has no chance against cheerleader Melissa. And cheerleader Melissa is going to take her down, destroy her. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart actually fought hard. She fought for her life. And I thought, my goodness. <laughs> Melissa really put her over this time. Uh, and so, you know, um, it was a surprise. But she actually beat her. She beat cheerleader Melissa. And it wasn't like, oh, come on. A rookie beat her, really? Uh, even the best get beaten sometimes. And, of course, they made her the champion. So she's like the best of the rookies. And they, I mean, they put. it looks like she's on the main roster now. Of course, she's still got the belt. So it's not like, I don't know how the rules work. Wrestling logic. Yay. Um, does she lose that belt because she's competing for the next one? Who knows? But I'm sure Melissa won't let this uh, insult uh, continue. And I think someone was saying, like, well, the old Melissa would have, you know, <laughs> ripped her throat out after the match. But no, that she just kind of, like, was just humiliated and she just kind of left. So, I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, is Melissa going to retire is she close to retirement? I know she is the uh, spokeswoman for stardom. Kind of this, um, it's kind of this uh, Japanese women's promotion, but, you know, it says right there on the Wikipedia page, uh, however official that might be, it, is that, well, it's, it's, it's all about the looks of the wrestlers and, you know, these cheesecake pictures and whatever. But uh, Melissa is kind of like their spokeswoman uh, or liaison or whatever she is um, in the States. So I don't know if um, she has her hands full with that. She didn't really give a clear answer whether she's retiring. When she does, she does. But she's a legend. She's an OG, as she says. Um, and, you know, Melissa's much better on the mic when she's just spontaneous. When she does see these promos, she's kind of like, I don't know, not as good. But I like Melissa. I'll miss her when she leaves, uh, whenever she does. But anyway, she really put over Shotzi Blackheart this time. And, you know, I had some respect for Shotzi Blackheart and by this point. So, good for her. Uh, next, we have Courtney Rush, the Demon Hunter. Courtney's not here anymore, says her t-shirt. So, who is she? Um, she was against Britt Baker. Poor Britt Baker, you know, just kind of a normal person. This was one of those matches, and this started to happen. You know, I've talked about this on previous volumes. Let's say the wrestlers go out of the ring, but they're not on my side of the ring. They're, like, over on the other side. And sometimes these the wrestlers, they would get out of the ring and they would just do some moves on the outside and then we'd go to the other side and do some moves on the outside. Kind of like when they go outside the ring, it's like, okay, you guys get to see us do this brawl and we'll go on the other side and do this brawl and, and they just kind of repeat themselves. But sometimes some stuff happens and you don't get to see it. you got to wait a year for the digital versal disc to come out. Of course, fans who weren't there have to get to watch the whole thing when it finally comes out a year later. Um, but some stuff happened, didn't see it. Some of the fans on the other sides of me, you know, told me what was going on. It's like, oh, they're fighting outside the ring. Oh, she threw her down. Oh, um, oh, she got missed. And I said, missed? Like, like she missed? Like, missed with the move? It's like, no, because, um, uh, she, Britt Baker, she was covering her eyes. She had a towel, and I thought, was, was she bleeding? I thought maybe she had it over her nose. Was she bleeding? Um, but it was, it was missed. M-I-S-T. You know, like, um... Mischief. Mischief would spray the, the, the green mist. It's supposed to be like venom or something in the person's eyes. Ah. Of course, it's a trick that a lot of wrestlers do. Great Muda. You know, it's either powder or liquid. Um, but it was red. So I was thinking, blood? It's like, no, no, it's mist. So 
sometimes uh, Courtney Rush, you know, she does this um, now that she's an evil like vampire, demon, zombie, crazy person, whatever. She she sprays uh, mist out of her mouth, and then she got her in the eyes, and she was blinded, and she was defeated. So that was the end of that match. You know, Courtney Rush victorious. Uh, so I'll just I'll just have to wait to see that moment uh, on the home edition when it comes out a year from now. That's okay. I've got other other wrestling I can watch in between. Do do what you do, Dave Prezak and company. Do what you do. Um, so then we had uh, Madison Eagles against Shayna Baszler. This was great. This was awesome. This was good. Uh, I can always expect a good match out of Madison Eagles and Shayna Baszler. She's really gone far in a short period of time. I'm sure she must have been training her her behind off, you know, behind the scenes, going from MMA to uh, professional wrestling. And so they didn't put her out there before she was ready. She's definitely um, is um, believable as a um, tough person and definitely believable as a professional wrestler. So the two of them had a great match. Um, and Madison Eagles did defeat her, and these little girls just ate that up. It's like, you guys keep losing. You lost your last match. You're going to lose the next one. And wouldn't you know it, they were right. Uh, but it wasn't just like a foregone conclusion. It was like, you know, the bad guys have to get their comeuppance at some point, but maybe not right away. And they can be a credible threat. And Madison was once evil herself, so, you know, uh, good or bad, she's definitely uh, a tough... Okay, so we get to the 8th match, uh, Shimmer Volume 93. We have Mia Yim against Kaylee Ray. And this was the friendship, friendship, again, uh, Mortal Kombat match, uh, between the two friends. You know, um, and, you know, it was the sadness, breaking up the tag team, because only one of them can be the contender, the number one contender for, to challenge for the title. Um... So they had to fight each other, and, you know, they, they, they would have, you know, a series of moves, and they would kind of, like, smile, like, nod respect to each other, you know, keep going. And this wasn't like, you know, Ric Flair getting super kicked by Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. Like, I love you, sorry, kick him in the face, and then take him down. No, it was just more like, at some point, um, Mia Yim, like, she uh, threw Kaylee Ray into the ropes, like she was whipping into the ropes and then she grabbed at her throat for a second and then she pulled her hand away I don't know if she did it by accident or if it was you know intentional but it looked like it was accidental she was like I am so sorry and Kaylee Ray like whips her to the ropes and they keep on fighting and then another point she hits her with some move she says oh I'm I'm sorry and it was like okay so they're telling the story now she's sorry I'm, I'm going to beat you I'm sorry and the Smarky fans were like, stop being sorry. You're just trying to win the match. Stop being sorry. And then it was just sort of like a joke chant, like, stop being sorry. <laughs> Which thankfully was just in that little circle. It didn't go out to the whole, stop being sorry. But, you know, I was starting to soften a little bit on these uh, Smarks. They were, at least they were being funny some of the time. They weren't uh, totally annoying all the time. Which at some point they they were. So... <laughs> Stop being sorry. Just win the match. You're trying to win the match. I know it's your tag team partner, but you gotta do that. So Mia Yim eventually defeated her. Uh, number one contender for the Shimmer uh, Championship. Uh, these two are good, and it's always uh, tricky when you have the heel versus heel match and the face versus face match to you know pull it off in a convincing way. And the crowd's gonna be divided. Someone's gonna be cheering for one person. Someone's gonna be cheering for the other. Who do you cheer for? I cheered for Mia Yim. Uh, Kaylee Ray, you're great, but I had to go with Mia Yim this time. Sorry. Uh, so it was good. It was fun. Um, good matches. Uh, so far, you know, it was turning out to be a good volume. Uh, I think 93 is slightly superior, just because, you know, you had all of these chips finally falling into place. The Smarks are getting shut down. The Smarks are leaving. Uh, the little girls are wiping them out. They're starting to heckle the... You know, the, the, the whole dynamic is improving. And yes, people are tired. There's some kind, of, some kind of snafu with the pizza. There was this, all this stuff. Was Kevin Harvey was talking about the pizza. It's like, well, just going to tell you all that Nicole Matthews took all the pizza. Pizza taker. Because she, she was making like Undertaker references. Like she's the Undertaker. She's the locker room leader and whatever. She's the um, 
Well, I didn't say Phenom, but, you know, they kept making all these veiled Undertaker references. Undertaker, of course, now retired from WWE after a long, illustrious career. Um, but they started calling her Pizza Taker. Perfect setup, guys. High five, high five, Smarks. You won. But, uh, so I don't know. I didn't eat, it, eat any of the pizza there, so I don't know if she really did take the pizza or if they just said that to rile people up, or maybe she did and it was to rile them up, but whatever. And she said, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to have some, have a sandwich later and a beer and a burger. Was that me? Yeah, someone was saying that. It's like, but not a pizza. Whatever. So sometimes the jokes are funny. Ah, uh, yes. Anyway. So, um, moving on. So, Mia Yim, number one contender. Next, we had uh, Tessa Blanchard and uh, Vanessa Craven, uh, the tag team, you know, that uh, now is highly respected, against Jessica Havoc and Nevaeh. Now, you know, there was no streamers in this show, no streamers at all, because no Joshi, but there was one streamer, one pathetic little streamer, went for that match, so nice try. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but... Uh, this was a tag team match for the tag team uh, Shimmer Championship of tag teams of the world of tag teams or something. Uh, sorry, getting a little tired, but uh, we'll make it through. We will make it through. So, um, Jessica Havoc and Nevaeh, an unlikely pairing. Of course, Jessica Havoc now face, you know, she has her little plastic bat. Uh, there was an earlier part, you know, where they had the run-in with Vanessa Craven and Tessa Blanchard kind of chase them off, and Nevaeh comes in. And Nevaeh had this purple hair, and she's in her jeans, and uh, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, Jessica Havoc, I think she had blue hair, so blue and purple, um, against, of course, you know, two of them uh, just have regular hair, but a brightly colored hair, uh, and, but, but Nevaeh had the plastic baseball bat of, of uh, Jessica Havoc, and, she, and it's just a minor thing, she was tapping it on the top of the ring post, making it obvious it was a plastic bat, and come on, if you're going to do that, I mean, I understand if you're going to hit someone in the face with a baseball bat in wrestling, which you probably shouldn't do, uh, hopefully it's a fake, you know, gimmicked, you know, plastic bat or whatever, not a real wood or metal, uh, baseball bat, which could really, you know, hurt someone and kill them, uh, and it's not believable that they would do that, take the hit and survive, um, but when you're going to tap it like that, it's, it makes it obvious it's plastic. So use a real one or don't do it at all. Of course, there was the, they already broke that with, uh, you know, Jessica Havoc would come out with a baseball bat, and she actually broke it over someone's head at one point. It was it was plastic. You know, pieces were break, of it breaking off as she's hitting it. It's So who knows? I guess in storyline, it's plastic. We know it. But she was tapping it like, I got a plastic bat. I mean, you know, it wouldn't feel nice to get slapped in the face with a plastic bat. It would, you know, it would hurt a little bit, but it was certainly not the threat that the bas baseball bat represents. Well, anyway, whatever. So they set up this match, and um, it uh, they fight on, but uh, Tessa and uh, Craven uh, win the day, and I believe at this point, you know, they're still feuding with each other, and uh, Tessa insists on stealing the kill, stealing the pin, uh, pulling her opponent off and taking it, and then just the back and forth, the back and forth between them, it was very believable. It wasn't just goofy, it was getting serious, it's violent, it's scary. Uh, so kudos. But the two of them work very well together. They can't keep it up forever. I mean, it's obviously going to reach a boiling point. It needs to be resolved. Um, but uh, it's it's fun to watch the the journey. Fun to watch. And you know, Jessica Havoc. You know, uh, going back and forth. She's a face now. Uh, Nevaeh, very competent. And of course, the little girls loved her. Uh, in previous shows, it was just kind of like dead, dead, dead. And then all of a sudden, ah, you know, we love you. The the greatest. Um, the girls had been, you know, just really enthusiastic and keeping the show going for a lot of the time. So, you know, their uh, praise for Nevaeh, not misplaced at all. And she said something like, you know, um, you know, I hope you, I hope you become a fan for real, you know, if you weren't a fan before. And I, I do try to keep it family friendly. So, you know, very humble, very honest uh, person and uh, respect, you know, a veteran like Nevaeh. And uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan now. So good for her. Um, then, uh, so after that, you know, the heels win. Uh, boo. Um, and, uh, of course, they didn't, you know, these other people didn't win the, the championship. Because I guess it was a title match. Um, so 
I don't know, as, as someone next to me was like, you know, confused about, you know, how it quite works, you know, who gets the championship title shot, and how does it all rest in logic. I don't know, maybe it all makes sense, some smart can explain it to me in the comment section if you care, which you probably don't, you didn't see the match with me, so, whatever. Um, uh, just, just curious, I don't know. Um, next we had Shaza McKenzie against Nicole Savoy. And these girls, they were just like, you've lost your match, you're going to lose it again. And Nicole Savoy not having any of it, you know, smack talking him right back, had said, you know, you you really got beat up, but, you know, you show that you have the heart. Uh, you really represent the heart of Shimmer. You know, she was totally playing coy with the fans and back and forth, and people were like, heart, heart, heart. She's just, it's the one word I'm thinking of. What is it? And, you know, obviously having a good time with it. It's, it's so cheesy. So funny, so predictable, but, you know, whatever. They just uh, fulfill the expectations. So, she becomes the lovable underdog. Uh, she survived. She, um, if this were a video game, you know, her entire body would be red at, like, maximum damage. She's still continuing on. She's still fighting. Her opponents won't let her be defeated. And there was one point, I mean, the, the smarks were right. They were just like, make the tag. Make the tag. But she wouldn't make the tag. Um, so, yeah, it's like, okay, um, be smart. I mean, courage is one thing, tenacity is another thing, but, uh, don't be stupid. If you, uh, if you go against your own self-interest in the match and you get beat down for it, well, what did you expect to happen? So, Shazza McKenzie against Nicole Savoy. Nicole Savoy, very talented. I know she's a heel, I know she has to be beaten, but, uh, I just like her a lot, and, um, I wish she'd win more, but, you know, she's such a cocky character. You know, whatever. She's she's done well uh, with what she's been given, and I think she's great. But uh, Shaza defeated her. And one fan, uh, one of the smocks, he was just booing as loud as he could. Boo, boo, boo. It's like, you don't deserve it. You, you got beat down again. You're getting beaten down again. Uh, whatever. So, finally... We have, um, Sweet Soraya, you know, and she was trash-talking, um, Mercedes, and Mercedes is, you know, she's the cowardly heel, but she's also a very powerful fighter, and the thing is, like, Sweet Soraya talks so much trash, you know, she calls people stupid cows, and she <laughs> profane insults, and she just does everything she can to tear people down, and she's bad. But she's on our side, right? She's a heel, though, but she's by herself. She's a heel. And she insults, um... She insults Mercedes. And Mercedes, you know, insulted her for being old. And she's a has-been. And, you know, um... And I forget now if it was Mercedes or one of the others said, Well, well I don't need, you know, to have, you know, um... Mercedes was saying, like, well, I don't need to have, like, a daughter in the WWE in order to, you know, be important or something like that. And, you know, she got made her angry. Um, but she said something like, well, I've I've been a wrestler for, you know, so many years, and I, I've birthed champions. And, and it was just, like, or, or raised champions. And so, you know, she they went back and forth. But, see, Mercedes is the kind of person, she's savvy. She's, she's a veteran. She will... Um, She'll get, dish out insults, and uh, she'll be called a coward. But she don't. She won't, like, spring like what? How dare you? You know, she's not. She she's smart. She's savvy. She's mature. So she'll just kind of like brush it off, and then when the match starts, she'll run away, and then she'll use it to her advantage. And then she'll come in and she'll attack. Um, she'll just use whatever she needs to win. It, it's like it, words don't phase her. You know, and her gestures are perfect. <laughs> Just throughout the matches, she's just having, obviously having a great time uh, wrestling. And, you know, I, you know, she heard she, you know, she got married. She had a child. She's, you know, she's, she's living the, the life. And uh, she's back in wrestling. She obviously loves to be a wrestler. And it's, you can tell she just puts so much care into it. She's just so cocky. You know, she's she'd be like lounging on the ropes like nothing's happening you know, perfect timing you know she gives these slaps these chops that just sound like horrific um when she gets taken down it's just you know uh you believe it she just 
a very experienced wrestler. She's kind of been there and done that. So, of course, you'd expect nothing less. One of my favorites, and when she does retire, which, for all I know, she retired already. But um, don't don't freak out, because you know the results. If you're watching this, you already know the results, uh, whether she retired or she didn't, or if she ever retires. But if she ever does, when she's, I mean, it'd be sad to see her go as a fan, but, you know, good luck. Um, definitely have to go back and watch her old matches again, because she's just that talented and that great. You know, and she, there was one interview I watched of, um, Mercedes Martinez once, where she said, like, her dream, her dream was to be in the WWE. She really wanted to be in the WWE, and I was just like, it's so unfair that she never got to do that, but, and, and she, there was another later interview, she said, ah, maybe I had too many tattoos, they didn't want me, um, but, but she got her moment. She had a match against Victoria. So did, um, Chia Lita Melissa. Um, of course, Victoria, known as Tara in TNA, in WWE. So they each had a match, and it was televised. Uh, Mercedes Martinez, and she comes out, and, you know, she had a match. She got a few good moves in, but she eventually got defeated. You know, they both had short matches, but, um, she got, she had a moment. She had a WWE moment. And, of course, you know, I was already a fan, so, you know, I thought, yep, good for her, good for her. Um, but, uh, great indie wrestler. Melissa, uh, Mercedes, Mischief, you know, um, pillars of Shimmer. Uh, very excellent. Um, so anyway, uh, Sweet Soraya, cheating right in front of the referee, crotch hits, you know, uh, profanity, um, uh, hard-hitting, uh, believable, uh, tough woman. You know, it was a good match. I expect nothing less from both of them. And uh, they had a great, great match. Uh, people were exhausted, but, you know, they couldn't help but uh, be taken on. Well, Mercedes retained. She won. She defeated Sweet Soraya. And, of course, Soraya, you know, got, uh, you know, some, some ovations at the end for trying. Um, you know, <laughs> we've hated her. We've been afraid of her. Uh, she's always been uh, at the fans' throats, you know, sometimes literally... You know, slapping fans and knocking hats off and threatening people and so forth. Uh, very profane, vicious woman. But, um, you know, Mercedes needs to be stopped. But uh, she won. And, of course, you know, again, the title could have changed already. But we'll have to see the spoilers for the other uh, episodes. And if you're watching this, you obviously don't care about spoilers that much anyway. But um, great wrestlers, both of them. Great match. Great way to end the evening. And, you know... Um, they were talking, they were announcing matches for the next show, and I thought, you know, I could come back. I could watch them. But I thought, nope, I'm not going to do it. It's, um, I need to save my energy for other things. And if you're one of the fans that saw the rest of the show, good for you. Uh, you had that experience. I hope it was all that this night was and more better. Um, hopefully the smocks weren't so bad the second night. Um, but, uh, you know, you kind of grow together. You sit there and you have a friend for seven hours of wrestling and hopefully you get along and you watch the show together and whatever, exchange high fives, cheer against each other. The, the whole fan community, you know, it's, it's its own dynamic. So if you ever get a chance to see independent wrestling, um, if you're a fan of professional wrestling at all, do it. Definitely worth it. You know, others have said the same thing on podcasts and things. I believe Solo Monster has recommended it. If he recommends it, it must be good, right? Well, I like his show, whatever. Don't always agree with him, but uh, worthwhile listening. You know, that's kind of a shout-out, an in informal shout-out. I do like the wrestling podcasts. You know, I don't always agree with them, but um, Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle, listen to them. Solo Monster, listen to them. I used to listen to the Women of Wrestling podcast, Ring Bells. I don't think they do that anymore because one of the uh, presenters passed away. It was sad, you know, died kind of young. Uh, but that was always interesting, listening to the um, them interview these women wrestlers, kind of a candid, you know, little profile, and you kind of learn more about them. Um, so I would say uh, volume 93 is superior to 92, um, and I think part of it was just the crowd was more warmed up. You know, it can go the other way. Sometimes the crowd can be dead. You know, they're just exhausted, and they just can't keep it up, and the wrestlers are tired, and it just isn't, it doesn't have as much energy. And it wasn't all brawling, that may be a Sunday thing. Um... But uh, definitely a lot of good stuff. There was one silly match where um, I think it might have been the Kaylee Ray versus Mia Yim match where, you know, they're friends, but they're fighting for the championship. And there was one point where 
I think, uh, you know, they call it a kip up, where the person gets knocked to the ground and they kind of flip up back on their legs and they spring forward. And it looks cool. They do it in a lot of movies with ninjas. You know, they fall down and they kind of flip themselves back up. It actually wastes a lot of energy. They say it's not really a good battle tactic. But it looks cool. So people always do it in action fight scenes and movies to show like, Hey, oh, you knocked me to the ground? I'm ready to fight you again. Like, you didn't really do that much damage. And so uh, Kaylee Ray does it. Mia Yim does it. So they're kind of like playing off of each other like... Uh, I can keep up, so can I. And then they told the referee to do it, like, hey, you want to try it? And the fans were like, yeah, comedy moment. And I think it was Coin was the name of the wrestler. Uh, wrestler. The referee, uh, they kind of wrestle sometimes, but the uh, bald referee, he, he lays down in the middle of the ring to do the kip up, and you're thinking, well, of course he's going to fail uh, because, you know, he's not a wrestler, he's not trained or whatever. Of course, some of those, I mean, for Bryce Rensburg, you know, jumping over the ropes and flipping and spurling, you know, very um, acrobatic guy, you know, and he has to be to, you know, keep up with the action sometimes. Of course, he wasn't there at that night. But some of these referees, you know, they could be wrestlers themselves. Uh, and sometimes maybe they are, you know, they, they didn't want to wrestle, they couldn't quite make it, um, but they wanted to do the referee thing, and they're an important part of every show, every match. And you don't even notice him half the time. So so the referee gets down there, and he he's a kip up, and it's successful, and he does it right. And he's like, yeah, and the crowd's like, yeah. And there was some the smocks next to me were like started chanting like, holy bleep, you know, not bleeped out, you know, family show, and they didn't really do it loud enough to start a real chant, but they were just like, holy. In the video games, they censored it so they'd be a holy shh, holy shh, holy shh. It just sounds funny, but I guess that's how it sounded on television, even during the Attitude Era. They would censor the profanity from the crowd. Um, sometimes, not always. But anyway, just to show. So, um, 92 good, 93 better, and overall, uh, Shimmer delivers once again, despite all the things these shows had going against it, you know. Uh, no Joshi. Uh very diminished fan participation, but not dead crowds. I mean, those dead crowds, the, the, the traditional crowd, you know, the Joshi fans, the guys with the colorful hats, all those people, even they can't keep it up forever, I guess. Sometimes it's just dead. So, I don't know. Uh, very different character for Shimmer lately. Um, a whole year has changed a lot of things. A lot of people are gone. But even with all those things working against it, these were still worthwhile shows. So when they come out on digital versatile disc, obviously watch the older shows um, first. You know, the 41, 42, that kind of area, 36, 37. Amazing, solid wrestling all the way up to, you know, at least to volume 80. I can't speak for, you know, 81 through uh, 90. Uh, but 91, good. Um, I would say, let's see. I'd say there were more, I mean, there were there were several wrestlers that appeared in 91 that were not in 92, 93, so it kind of depends if you like those wrestlers better, but I think um, 93 was better than 91, in my opinion, I mean, I could go back and watch it again, and, and if I have the, if I had the disc of the new ones, I could compare it again, it's, it's kind of hard to split it, uh, but just my feeling is that I enjoyed this a little bit more, um, 92, a little bit of a rough start, uh, but I think once he got the smarks under control, I think it really got fun, it really was a good evening, so hats off, well, if I had a hat, I don't, um, to the production team of the wrestlers, and I hope they have a safe trip home, and, you know, I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing, but I'll be posting these videos up soon, and uh, maybe put up some other things later on um, as I get time, but I thank you for your patience, uh, for watching, for listening, or whatever, and if it does encourage you to check out Shimmer if you haven't before, please do, but don't be a smock. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh,